research was used to examine the relationship of the identified variables based on the quantitative data that was gathered on the existing student profile from the guidance office, which includes family dynamics, psychological test results, and academic records. While experimental research was used in determining the relationship of family dynamics and psychological test result to academic performance as predictors using C4.5 algorithm. Participants for the study of the 419 students of the College of Computer Studies, only 122 students were considered in the study given that they had complete information needed for the study itself. So this includes that the student was able to uh, accomplish the complete cumulative record, was able to take the psychological test, and has existing academic record. So the covered uh, school years and semester for the study is from uh, school year 2015-16, 2016-17, and 2018-19 which covers the following program, BSES, BSIS, BSIT, and DMIA. And only up to the third year level. So for the procedure, um, the quantitative data was collected ver first based on the, or rather composed of student profile family dynamics, um, psychological test results, and academic performance of students. Uh, data were then classified and cleaned out as to the data set itself in which we identify students with complete family dynamics, psychological tests, and enrolled in the defined school year. So um, the implementation of the, of the C4.5 algorithm was mostly done during the building of the decision tree, which is embedded in the system. And linear regression was only a form to verify whether what is generated by the algorithm itself uh, are somewhat similar. So here we try to identify, uh, using linear regression, we try to identify the relationship between the students family dynamics, psychological test result, and academic performance. And in the evaluation of the system itself, we made use of the ISO standard. For the results, discussion, and impl implications, so to test the accuracy of the system in terms of variable uh, classifications, the Weka, which is a third-party software, was used and it shows that the system has 98% accuracy rate, which means that the system has 98 accuracy rate as compared to other statistical software. Second is that further test was done to, to determine whether significant relationship exists between study variables, and the result shows that of the five variables considered, which is the student's probationary status, number of elevated cases, semester enrolled, parents were abroad, and mother was abroad, were found to be significant correlates of uh, average grade. This means that uh, these variables can be used to identify students who are more likely at risk using the system itself. So in the case of the College of Computer Studies, these are students that we classify to be under the provisionary status. For the evaluation of the, the, uh, the DSS or the system itself, it shows that excellent overall evaluation uh, was reached based on the evaluation done by the guidance counselor. So they are the respondents here, and these are the different modules that was included in the system. For the conclusion and recommendation, so in, therefore we uh, rather the study concludes that the system was found to be accurate based on the results of the tests of the variables considered in the study. The absentee OFW mother and the separated parents 
are good predictors of the status of academic performance of students. And third is, in identifying the features of the functionalities included in the decision support system, the result of the survey shows a rating of excellent in all six characteristics based on the ISO standard. As to the recommendation, so the data gathered during, uh, because there are uh, a period in the monitoring itself when additional informations are being noted by the guidance counselors. So this data that are being gathered during the period of the counseling and checklist of symptoms for each of the domains of psychological tests may be as latent variables. Um, Second is, the system can be used to identify students who are at risk, therefore enabling the development of programs to address the problems in which interventions can be given earlier and services can be proactive on the side of the guidance uh, office. For system enhancement, it is recommended that it should be designed to be dynamic in terms of handling interpretations of psychological test. So we will now proceed with the presentation of the system. So currently, um, this system is being used already by the guidance office. So there is a period in um, the first semester wherein students, all students enrolled in, um, what's this, guidance? SIL-1, yes. SIL-1 are being scheduled to encode their grades. Wherein um, we made use of a web application, okay? But before that, we, act we actually uh, get hold of the uh, data from the, guide uh, from the registrar's office, wherein we, we uh, copy it and upload it into the system. So there is a part of the system, which is the data transfer module, uh, wherein this is where we try to upload the, the existing student profile from the registrar's office and the academic grades. And through the web, through the web, so um, the students fills out, logs in into the system and fill out the information sheet. Next is the psychological test interpretation. So what happens is, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, as a pilot psychological test being used, we made use of the college assessment, uh, a college adjustment scale, wherein um, the, the students are, are uh, given the test itself and their uh, sort of answers are being scanned through the RSEC and uh, an Excel file of that uh, answers are being uploaded into the system itself, in which after uploading, it is being interpreted by the system. So there would be an individual um, result being given uh, to the student. So you could view the CAS profile of the student itself in terms of the interpretation of the said psychological test. So this is the data that was uploaded based on the answers of the student for the psychological test.
So this is the equivalent psychological test result that was taken from the uh, rules implemented in terms of uh, interpreting the CAS itself. Um, in addition to that, the system is able to also identify based on the, what's this, the graph of the CAS profile. So this is also the basis for the interpretation of the guidance counselor to determine the level itself based on the domains defined by the said uh, psychological test. So next is the archiving. Okay, so considering that um, the records needs to be maintained in perpetual by the guidance office, so we designed a module wherein um, this module will handle records of students who have already graduated. So any inactive record are being managed under this module. Next is the data classification. So this module um, is the one that generates the rules for classification or where C4.5 algorithm was implemented. So the rules that are being generated here, which is also the basis later on for decision making in terms of programs and um, what's this, in terms of predicting the uh, academic performance of the students. Okay. Next is the reports. So the report module is used for the generation of cumulative record, psychological test, test summary, and academic status. So somehow this is an individual, there is no consolidation yet that we have integrated, but rather it's an individual report for every student that is being reported to be monitored by the guidance office. Okay, so that's the end of the presentation. So I remember this morning we were talking about impact of uh, research work and uh, here we have one that is very impactful. Okay, so uh, thank you, Professor Rea Pibaluntong. Let's go to the next presentation and that would be Efficiency, Sustainable Alternative Technologies in Engineering, Computer Assisted Electrical Load Design and Analysis System by Professor Margie Rose B. Parenio to be presented by the author herself.
Hello, good afternoon. Um, my paper is about computer-assisted electrical load design analysis system using best fit algorithm. Um, so let me start with this simple introduction. So like we said, electricity is the lifeblood of technology. It has become a focal point of innovation and progress. It has extremely a convenient way to transmit electrical energy and has been adapted to large and growing numbers of uses and application. So basically everything that we are enjoying right now is because we have electricity from cell phones, the TV, to computers, even the lights, the air gun. Unfortunately, with the advantages and the con, we also have the disadvantages. So Based on the statistics from Bersales, this is from 2018, the leading cause of the incident or fire incidents in the entire country, that is for the Philippines, is due to electrical connection, which is, constitutes about 4,000, sorry, uh, 4,872 incidents out of 14,197 in fire incidents in the last 2017. So it means that most often than not, when we hear that there is a fire, the first suspect is usually due to faulty electrical connections. So I would always stress this one out, that it is not about faulty electrical wiring, it's more on faulty electrical connections. So we already have a problem. So as the problem is more on on our connection rather than on the type of materials that we tend to use. So this, actually I made this study because this is quite close to me because I am a practicing electrical engineer. So this is one of my job that is for doing electrical design. So one requirement of course if we want to have a new building, a new house, so one of the requirements is electrical design. So this is needed for a building if you are going to apply for your local electrical cooperative, either PECO, whatever. They are going to require you for an electrical plan. So this is one of the most tedious plans to make because we need to count each and every light, um, lighting outlet. We need to count each and every convenient outlet. All the appliances should be counted for and should be added properly. So that is one of the most, like I said, one of the most tedious job of, a, of an electrical engineer. So if we, hopefully not, if we make mistakes in computations, of course, it means that we might be able to assign, um, sub, not necessarily substandard, but less, um, not appropriate or inappropriate circuit breakers and conduits. So um, with this one, um, these are my statement of the problem. So difficulty for electrical design engineers to keep track of the different electrical loads, specification and different load and demand factors which would lead to inaccurate load computation. So right now, um, gone were the days that I only have to, con I only have to consider pin lights, fluorescent outlets. Now I have LED lights, I have rope lights. So every now and then, they would add new electrical components or new electrical loads. So I have to keep track of all of them. And of course, with that, I actually made an Excel table for this one. I have all the electrical loads there from the lights to the convenience outlet, all the air conditioning unit. I have it all there so that it would be easy for me to keep track whenever I do my computation. Later, I'm going to show you the, the tables that I have made so far. So that's the first problem. So every time that I add new one, it would be a little bit difficult for me to keep track of all the new um, loads. Next one, um, design analysis was prone to miscalculation due to human errors, especially using incorrect load currents, incorrect safety factors, and the like. It could lead to assignment of inappropriate wiring sizes and conduits that could result to electrical related accidents that could cause damage to property and loss of lives. That's the second one. The third, 
Assigned sizes of wires and circuit breakers were inconsistent with the Philippine Electrical Code standards. So we could not just assign any circuit breakers, any wiring. It has to confirm with the Philippine Electrical Code. And the last one would be data transfer from design analysis computation to the load, load schedule were susceptible to errors, thus creating confusion and unreliable electrical design. So these are the problems that I have enumerated. And for the objective of the study, general objective, the study aimed to develop a computer-assisted electrical load design analysis system using the best fit algorithm. So I'll be using that algorithm to properly assign circuit breakers and wirings to my circuit branches and to my MDP or my main distribution panel later. So um, specific objective to develop an object data store that could add, delete, update different electrical fixtures, there's corresponding specification and rating that would keep track of the different electrical loads, specification, and different load and demand factors. Number two, to create a computation module that would calculate the incorrect, uh, sorry, the correct opacity of each branch circuit, as well as for the main circuit breaker and feeder lines. Um, number three, to develop an object search module that would select the most appropriate thermoplastic high heat resistant nylon or the THHN copper wiring sizes and protective devices for each branch circuit, main circuit breakers, feeder lines in conformity with the Philippine Electrical Code. Um, before I continue, I only focus with the THHN copper wires, but there are a lot of other wirings that you could use. Um, like for, for the past few months, aluminum wires has become popular with electrical designs. So they're a lot cheaper, but you need to assign a bigger size compared for the THHN. Next one, to develop a module that would generate a reliable load schedule that can be exported to another program. So basically, this is my methodology. Uh, I use the Rapid Application Development Module or the RAD module because this is more appropriate for what I am, I want to achieve. So since I am the user, one of the user, and the, the application of the RAD is that you keep on developing, creating a prototype, and then testing it again, and if you could find something wrong, you redesign again and then test it again, so on and so forth, until you were able to create the perfect application that will fit your standards. And this is basically the phases of electrical building design. So, sorry. We start with the floor plan preparation. So, this part is not part of my system. So the floor plan preparation is not part of my system. The assigning of the loads, the circuit, determination and load assignments, and panel identification. So all of these are being done by electrical engineers. Now, if I already have the assignments of load, I already have identified my panels, it is the time that I do my computation. So this is the time wherein I compute for the branch circuit, the ampacity, what circuit breaker I should use, what wires I should use, and what conduit I should use. And of course, um, sorry, panel computation, computation of all panels, and then of course, at the end, the preparation of the load schedule. Basically, the load schedule is just a summary of my design analysis. So um, before that, let me show you what I mean kanina.
Okay, so this actually is the table that I have been creating for the past. No, it's more than past. I mean, I've been. I have this table since I passed the board exam. That is in twenty zero five. So I have here all my lights, all my motors. I have all the description, the wattage, the amperage, so that it would be easier for me to do my computation. So all I have to do is just look up what kind of, what is the light that I am looking, would it either be a pin light, a compact bulb, a fluorescent lamp, and how much would be the current. So I have that one, I have single phase motors, I have three phase, the wire size, so I have been compiling this for that long. One of the reasons, because this is quite easier for me to do rather than me going back and forth with the Philippine electrical code. So everything is there. I've been using this for quite a while. Now, um, the design analysis would look like this one. So design analysis, I have all the loads, like I said, like I said earlier. I have all the circuit breakers, and I would identify all the loads in the circuit breaker and then compute for the capacity and then I'm going to assign whatever wires I'm going to use and what circuit breaker I am going to use. So this one, um, this is for, so this building alone, is, it has about 26 pages of computation. So this is where usually errors comes in. When I do computations, especially with, I have 20 different panels to compute and I have about this long when doing the computation. So that's one, the, one of the problems that I want to address in this system. Okay, so now, um, this is now the result of my, the, the, uh, my system, the developed system. This is the load schedule this is now the generated design analysis and then we have there the computation for the main circuit breaker or the mcb the main circuit breaker that is the main breaker that would hold that will be that will hold the entire electrical um, system of the entire building or entire house and then i have here my one line diagram so this is how my panel would look like i have my main there and i have my branch circuits now i have um i asked about five design engineers or five professional electrical engineers to assess my work and this is the result of their evaluation so i use the iso 25010 standards, the set of the questions there. I asked them to try out my system, and then this is how they rate my system. So basically, I got an excellent rating for all of the characteristics. So findings. Um, based on the analysis of the study, the following findings were drawn. Number one, the development of data store for the electrical loads was beneficial for the design engineer it was able to consolidate all the required data for the computation. Number two, the computed opacity of the branch circuit, main circuit breaker, and feeder lines of the system is consistent to the result of the calculations done manually. Number three, the system was able to select the most appropriate circuit breaker, the HHN copper wirings and conduit to each circuit breaker, main circuit breaker, and feeder lines in conformity with the Philippine Electrical Code. Now, the title of my study is with the use of the best fit algorithm. So where did the best fit algorithm comes in? My algorithm is actually here on the assignment of the circuit breakers and wires. So when we talk about best fit algorithm, it will compute for the opacity, it will compute for the current, and then my system will search on the table which is the most appropriate size that it will assign. 
it can assign a higher value, but the problem usually is higher circuit breaker, bigger wires mean, means more expensive. So the difference between the size of the circuit breaker is not just about a thousand. Sometimes the difference would be 10,000, 20,000, and sometimes it could go up to a difference of a million in terms of the wires. So we have as electrical engineers, as design engineers, you have to create a balance, of course, between safety and cost. So that's why we, I chose the best fit algorithm. And then the number four, the system was able to generate a reliable load schedule that was able to derive from the calculation of the system. And based on these findings, I have the following conclusions. So number one, the development of the system provided a convenient way for the electrical design engineers to keep track of the different electrical loads by providing a data bank. This data bank will keep track of the different electrical loads, specification, and different loads and demand factors, which are evident in the excellent evaluation given by the experts. Number two, the system provided a significant assistance in performing calculations by minimizing human errors in the load analysis stage through automatically sorry through automate automating it it is also much more efficient in the system if the system is to be integrated to a design and drafting software example your our autocad or sketchup and Where was it? Uh, with the implementation of the best fit algorithm, the user of the system is able to select the most appropriate circuit breakers, wire sizes, and PVC conduits in the design analysis. However, the system only uses the THHN, copper wiring materials, and PVC conduit, which limits the flexibility of the user to choose other wiring materials as he sees fit. And number four, the system was able to generate an accurate load analysis computation, which was essential to the preparation of the load schedule and one-line diagram. However, the computation for the voltage drop, transformer ratings, ground, grounding sizes are not included in the system. For the recommendation, number one, with an excellent expert evaluation, the system computer-aided electrical load design analysis system may be implemented. Number two, to fully automate the preparation of the electrical plan, the system should be able to be, so it should be integrated to different drafting software like AutoCAD, SketchUp. Drawing the floor plan and load analysis can be done simultaneously. And number four, include voltage drops, generator sizes, and transformer ratings in the design analysis to give the electrical engineers a total overview of the design plans. And number four, to improve flexibility, other wiring materials and conduits will be included in the system. So, thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Engineer Margie Rose B. Parenio for a very useful uh, research. We go to the next presenter presenter which is on the efficiency sustainable alternative technologies in health assessment of the AH connect strategy as alternative health service points for DOH adolescent health and development program this is by Dr. Raquel L. Polecchio, Professor Rea P. Balantong, Professor Gift Trajico, Professor Flora Bel Suarez, Mr. Lennon D. Pahar, Dr. Merli Hunsai, and Ms. Edani Diboki. The presenter of this paper will be Dr. Raquel Polecchio, together with Professor Rea P. Balantong. Good afternoon. We are going to present our study on the assessment of the AH Connect strategy under the Alternative Health Service Points for Adolescent Health and Development Program of DOH Region 6. This is a study in, in partnership with the Department of Health Region 6. Okay. 
Okay, DOH Region 6 initiated a strategy that was launched in June 2015. A local initiative by DOH which was a breakthrough project being the first to be launched in the Philippines wherein they made use of the social media to reach out to our youth in the Western Visayas. So through this, they were able to answer queries or offer counseling, follow-up, and referral for troubled teens. This was in response to the findings of uh, a study by YAPS4 in 2013. And one of the recommendations in this study was that we should institute projects and activities responding to the health challenges that young people face in the light of changing times and social norms. Since its implementation in 2015, DOH Region 6 has gathered significant amount of data through the different platforms of AH Connect. However, there has been no study con conducted to as assess this. So in this study, our main objective was to assess the implementation of AH Connect as part of the alternative health service points for adolescent health and development program of DOH Region 6. Specifically, this study aimed to describe AH Connect program based on existing data gathered and to make a profile of clients in terms of age, gender, province, and nature of concerns. It also aimed to assess the AH Connect strategy in terms of adolescents' awareness of this strategy, the quality of topics or information provided them, the strategy's degree of important, importance and client's degree of satisfaction. And then to assess the suitability of the IT equipment used by DOH and other resources used to run the whole AH Connect system. Also to identify the strengths and weaknesses related to program management and monitoring. Of course, results of the study would be significant to the following groups. Our study had two phases. The quantitative data collection and analysis of the following. The baseline data provided by DOH. The researcher made questionnaire to be filled out online via Google form of previous clients who have availed of AH Connect services. Uh, the evaluation of the suitability of the IT equipment used to run the AH Connect system. And then from those who answered the online questionnaire uh, and those who gave their willingness to be interviewed either via phone, interview, or chat uh, messaging for clients. Um, interviews were conducted, the interviews were transcribed, and themes were also drawn out from the interviews. As for the IT equipment assessment, Okay, there were IT evaluators who assessed the system based on ISO 9126-1, a software quality model. There were interviews that were conducted with the AH Connect staff who were um, operating the system and a review of the user's manual of the system to evaluate the functionality as claimed in the interview and the assessment. From the data gathered, uh, the following were generated, the overall awareness, the strengths and weaknesses of the system, strengths and weaknesses related to program managing and monitoring. Okay, we'd like to share to you the results from when it started until 2018. So all in all, the AH Connect strategy was able to serve 1,038 uh, clients, and the highest uh, of which was in 2017 uh, with 46.24% of the clients uh, doing their queries.
Okay, as for transactions, this is the distribution. When we say transactions, this would be um, referring to the number of times clients contacted AH Connect. Results show that out of 833 client transactions, more than half of the transactions or 55.22% of these transactions were conducted in 2017. Okay, as for profiles, who were these clients? Most of the pro, um, clients belong to the female group. And when they were grouped according to age, data showed that most clients belong to the age group of 15 to 19 years old. Okay, when the clients were grouped based on provinces where they belonged, most of the clients came from Iloilo. So out of the 1,038 total calls, texts, and chats received by DOH, three of the most common concerns raised by clients were on relationships, peer relationships, and early sexual activity. Okay, we have a separate data for 2018. So in terms of issues and concerns raised in 2018, most of the issues and concerns were, the, were on home, sexuality, and education. We separated 2018 because from 2018, DOH used a tool that had the following categories which they called heads. Heads, home, education, eating habits, activities, drugs, and sexuality. As to awareness, respondents in the study were aware of AH Connect. They were able to access AH Connect from varied sources such as advertisements and flyers, contact information from convenience stores such as QuickSmart, and one from, one from a personnel from the Popcom office. The information received by the clients were varied depending on the client's needs or concerns such as sexuality, peer pressure, sexually transmitted disease uh, infections, depression, and suicide. As to importance, all respondents rated the AH Connect services to be very important. According to them, it is a big help for those who do not have the capacity to handle stress very well. It can help them with issues or problems encountered by others. It is an alternative approach for seeking help and providing clients' needs from the traditional method of seeking help from teachers or parents. When asked about their satisfaction regarding the services of AH Connect, it ranged from slightly satisfied to satisfied, which were attributed to the genuineness and caring attitude of the AH Connect staff. Okay, this implies that our youth have concerns which they may hesitate to disclose to others. As such, DOH, AH Connect strategy was indeed helpful in providing an avenue to address the various needs of our young people. As to the results of our interview, the following themes emerged. Peer pressure has an internal dimension and the individual has a personal control of the issue. So according to one interviewee, she claimed that you make your own nightmare, peer pressure is just in your own made nightmare, meaning they just make their own nightmares. Okay, another one, that AH Connect is a shelter for the troubled youth. As one interviewee stated, etong AH Connect parang naging shelter naming mga youth. Yung bang may mga problema, pag may time ka na talagang may matatakbuhan ka o wala ka na talagang matrust, meron kang hotline o taong tatawagan na alam mong makakatulong sa'yo. Family support is critical is a critical factor for the recovery of adolescents with peer issues which means that they can overcome their problems with support from their families as one participant has expressed and realized that I really need to trust myself na nabalan ko nga ara ang akon family nga mag-support kung kag mabuligan nila ako 
Another theme is the quality of the AH. Oops. The quality of the AH Connect service is equated with the counselor qualities or attributes observed from the AH Connect. So counselor qualities that were identified by the clients included the following genuineness, client sensitivity, caring attitude, confidentiality, promptness of response, and responsiveness to clients' queries and provision for referral. So, Professor Balontong is going to continue with the evaluation of the IT system. So, I'm here to discuss about the current process flow by the AH Connect. Um, there are actually two setups that they have. Uh, during the start of the study, there was only, um, what's this? two laptops, mobile phones, and one computer system that is being utilized. And there were three or four guidance counselors that were manning the operation itself. So when a call or a text or a message that's, that is being um, sent by a, a client, um, general or the, the basic uh, personal informations are gathered, such as the name, the age, gender, location, and the psychosocial history and uh, assessment data. After which, um, the, the guidance counselor will provide uh, assistance or even refer it to another department of the government that may meet the service that is needed by the client. Um, any uh, conversation that transpires may be uh, in a call is being uh, transcribed because mostly all the information are just being written in a log file using Microsoft Excel. After uh, that, in a specific period, they prepare and generate monthly and quarter quarterly reports which is forwarded to the Department of Health. So the second setup that they have, which is the, the current system that they, they are utilizing, is similar to the concept of a call center system, wherein the, the calls and the text are being logged in the system itself, and it is being recorded, and no transcription is already being made. But all the steps and actions are already guided by a manual that they have, with regards to the issues or concerns that are being raised by a client. So after the evaluation of the um, panel that we had, uh, external uh, panel that we had, the following were uh, the ratings. Uh, based on the standard of ISO and the criteria uh, as enumerated before, functionality, reliability, usability, efficiency, maintainability, and portability, the highest rating was under usability, in which as for the current system that they have, they found it to be very useful in terms of the service that AH Connect can render to the client. So the overall rating is good for the whole system. We move on to the recommendations of the study. Okay, there should be a continual promotion of the AH Connect strategy and establish linkages with public and private institutions by tapping school 
counselors and seek assistance from local government unit officials in promoting AH Connect services. By the way, let me just mention that the staff at DOH are trained staff, not necessarily registered guidance counselors. They are trained staff to be able to entertain queries. So if there are issues and concerns that are beyond their ability, they have another person, an expert, they can refer them to. DOH Region 6 should consider providing additional staff if DOH expects an increase in the number of clients in 2019 and onwards. AH Connect staff take turns in managing the mobile phones so that the burden of only one staff taking care of calls or queries during unholy hours may be entertained. Regular trainings to equip AH Connect personnel should be considered. An orientation or reorientation of staff regarding the new system to maximize its functionality. There should be an enhancement of some features of the existing software to provide more ease in the use of system and accuracy in the reports being generated. Suggestions for improvement of the system based on ISO standards should be considered. The online questionnaire made by the researchers may be used by the AH Connect strategy team to assess the services rendered to its future clients. So the last slide is thank you, but in the instructions, we were told to thank important people. And so I'd like to take the chance before I go down to thank some people because this is a research in partnership with DOH. So they really own this study. So we would like to thank DOH Region 6 through Director 4, Dr. Marlene Convocar for the partnership with CPU in conducting this study. Of course, we would like to thank Dr. Rosana Grace Bello de la Riarte, Dean of the College of Nursing of West Visaya State University, for serving as our technical reviewer of the study from the proposal writing up to the completion of this study. To the University of San Agustin Research Ethics Review Committee for reviewing the proposal so that the study is within the bounds of ethical practices in research. Thank you for your kind attention and we will be happy to answer questions later on. Good day and God bless us all. So this afternoon we have a variety of uh, researches which I think are very useful in the improvement of life and all of this are very impactful. So at this juncture in, in time, um, I would like to call the researchers to please come up stage to answer questions. We are now going to have our open forum. I would like to encourage the audience to please ask questions. Uh, please introduce yourself before you ask the question. So first question, please. Anyone from the audience?
Sir, the mic is over there. Good afternoon. I'm Rene Stomar from the Physics Math Department. Um, I'm sorry because I only had a chance to listen to the last speakers. <laughs> I don't know the other ones. But you're, you're the, the, about the DOH. It's very interesting um, uh, and really timely. I have like um, one inquiry though. Is this a longitudinal study? Is this a longitudinal study or one-shot study? Okay. It's not a longitudinal. Oh, okay. Because I thought I saw the numbers like 2015, 16, 17, 18. No, because there was never an assessment or evaluation of the program because it's a maiden program. They are the very first in the Philippines to launch this. So they wanted to see how well it was received by the clients in Western Visayas. Because from the results... Um, starting from 2015 until the present, they can also make recommendations to other regions to also do it because they can consider it as one of their best practices. So this was the very first study that we made since it was launched. Thank you, ma'am. Um, so about the results, I'm, I'm interested about the interview part. Did the respondents appear personally or you just interviewed them through text also and yeah and uh, call okay so what happened was uh, after they have uh, filled out the online form and then they would leave their number that would uh, show us their interest in being interviewed so we would contact them uh, and would make them choose if they would want to be interviewed over the phone because they have provided their phone number or through their messenger so we would search for them on messenger so some said i'd go for the phone interview others for the chat as for those who were interviewed we would repay them for spending a little going to an internet station or spending money calling us uh -oh, because we they're students so that's it and by the way we only considered clients who were 18 and above that's my next question, because how do we verify their ages? Yeah, okay. because they would give their age during their time of interview. It was, part of the, um, it was part of the questionnaire, at what age were you? So then we would calculate, oh, okay, they're 18, so they are qualified. Yeah, actually, we had a struggle on that part, because <laughs> from the OH side, they said, they may have changed their numbers, they're not contacting us anymore, plus for privacy purposes, they cannot give us the numbers. So we had to go back and forth and try to study how we would be able to contact them. So DOH uh, tried to contact all possible numbers that were in their records and encourage them to visit the FP page of AH Connect. So the Google form was just there at the AH Connect, and we had three versions, English, Filipino, and Hiligaynon. So we had experts translate it into the dialect, Filipino and uh, Hiligaynon, so that they are free to choose which one they would like to fill out, and then had another expert to, a set of experts to back translate, so that we don't lose the meaning of the English version that uh, was purposely done for that study. Yes, uh, I would like to congratulate the team because to me it's really difficult to gather the data, really difficult. To be honest, it took us almost two years to do this study. Thank you. Congratulations, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? What about the students? Do you have any question regarding the studies that was presented to us this afternoon? You might want to know where you can go to contact um, AH Connect strategy. <laughs> any more questions? Good afternoon. I'm Gif Trajico from um, Guidance Services Center. My question is addressed to Dr. Arias. 
Sir, um, in your methodology, you mentioned that you use um, mixed methods. So for the qualitative part, did you, are there th uh, themes generated? Um, so you use mixed method, qual quantitative, qualitative. So were you able to get the themes of your KIIs and your FGD? Yes, as I've explained, um, the first the, the data, the quantitative, um, um, there are figures there, there are statistics, and uh, we saw, uh, I saw the explanation behind the figures through KIIs. So uh, in doing that, um, like for instance, those, those groups that we found out, like the senior citizens, what's the story behind? So it's about uh, finding out uh, the, the activities that they do, the reason why they cross. Um, and then the sectoral activities. So uh, there are uh, areas there that uh, I analyze in relation to uh, principles of urban-rural uh, linkages. And, uh, along those lines, I developed uh, those areas and exhaustively use the KIIs. And they are very revealing, actually. And it, it helped, it actually explained the reason behind the figures and the st statistics. Uh, I wish I had more time to explain. There are still lots of stories within the study itself. I was, I, I was actually, uh, after the tragedy, actually I, part of my study, especially on the data, uh, it was used by, uh, the analysis, by the way, it was used by the provincial government of Guimaras. And I even uh, presented in a public safety forum. And it was when they understood why that is uh, the domino effect that happened was so great in terms of uh, economic losses, tourism drops, and all those things. And actually, virtually, the island was semi-isolated. And the result was... It's very uh, disadvantageous to uh, the province. Uh, the economic side really suffered a lot. And the thing is, when I did the study, I, I knew that it could happen. If something like that happens, that will uh, paralyze the transport. So there are still lots of many stories, uh, mini stories inside. <laughs> it's quite, uh, you know, it's about it's uh, planning, uh, urban regional planning perspectives, but it's a mix also of sociology and the other aspects of development studies. Thank you for the question from Gift. Anyone else? Siguro had look sila mag-ask questions sa mga computerized algorithm though medyo ano eh <laughs> Anyone else? Intimidated medyo sa algorithm eh so <laughs> Well I think the Uh, this question, uh, anybody who wants to answer. <laughs> First is, how would you now relate the findings of your study to the theme of the R&D week, which is resiliency and sustainable development? Okay, so with regards to the study that we conducted for DOH, actually, uh, we found the whole program of DOH to be very helpful. So that's why we included in our recommendation that there should be more of an aggressive advertisement of the program itself so that it would be able to address issues that currently are being experienced by, that, by a lot of young adults and somehow... Um, aside from the, the guidance offices that schools have, 
there could be another venue where they could be able to somewhat relate what they are experiencing and even seek advice because mostly of the uh, what's this the um, inquiries that they have is about love about sex which is one of the major uh, what's this objective of AH Connect which is the early pregnancy which they wanted to somewhat address so somehow sustaining the system itself would be very helpful for the, the, the young adults nowadays. So we just hope that the government will still pursue the, what's this, continue the program so that, uh, and advertise it and help, uh, what's this, uh, have an aggressive advertisement of the program itself. Actually, we recommended that they should be in touch with the guidance office of academes to help uh, promote the program. Uh, uh, in my part, in my, in my study, actually, it's uh, in terms of resilience, it's, it's about knowing how communities uh, react to shocks, such as tragedies and you know, climate change and disaster risk and uh, the hazards of, uh, like, for example, travel, transport. Um, actually, uh, DOST, uh, Director Hilonga was here this morning, uh, in the activity of DOST last time at the convention center for the innovation, the Hordan Motobanka Cooperative was actually asked to present on what they will do to adapt to the situation. They actually used my data and uh, the president sought my advice regarding the presentation and she later uh, gave a feedback that Director Hilonga was very appreciative because uh, it gave an idea on how the OST can come in and help them upgrade their transport services, considering the safety, the resilience aspect on how to uh, be resilient in times of uh, crisis um, and also in terms of sustainable development. The urban rural linkages, if uh, if a scientific approach using the principles is adapted, it will really result to sustainable development because it will, it will enable the future generations to meet their, their needs without, uh, by having the current uh, development actions not compromise the future needs of future generations. Okay, um, one of my target of my is basically to make sure that safety is always a must, especially like, uh, like the statistics that they have given earlier, that the most common cause of fire would be electrical in nature. So resilience, sustain, sustainability. We have to remember what I am doing or what I did was basically ultimate a very, very old way of computing something. So resilience, because you are, we are trying to save more lives, we're trying to save property, sustainability, in a sense that we are trying to bring technology or we're trying to bring an old thing to something new. And of course, introduce this one to maybe younger generations. Because the problem right now with electrical design is that most people will just use Excel, will just go drag without actually understanding what it is all about, why is it important, why do we need to do this at the same time. At least we, will be try we can try to minimize wastage when it comes to, I mean, this can work for this one, why do we have to go with this one? So that is basically one of my goal for this research. And for my, uh, the, the study that we conducted in relation to guidance counseling, um, actually, um, when we tried to conceptualize the whole thing, we re really found that there is a need for such system for the guidance office, considering that there is a volume of records that they need to maintain, and somehow one of it is, um, er, uh, what's this, uh, keeping the, the record regarding the monitoring and consultation that is being um, given to the to the student itself. So the system, by, by introducing the technology, it really helped in a way that the management of the record, the monitoring is being done, 
and with the output of the system itself, which uh, I mentioned uh, during the presentation, was that uh, somehow the, the guidance office would be able to uh, formulate programs that would address issues that would come up based on the result of the psychological test. As a pilot uh, psychological test that we use, which is the CAS, there are uh, nine main domains which were identified, which is um, one of them is depression, anxieties, family, careers, and others. Somehow, currently, depression is one of the major issues being encountered by a lot. And uh, with the use of this um, application, they would, the, the system is able to provide a report that would uh, sum up the number of students that are experiencing depression based on the result of the psychological test. So if such uh, data is available to the guidance counselor, they would be able to formulate programs in order to address issues that are being encountered by the student itself. Is the program already implemented? Yes, ma'am. Actually, it is being utilized by the guidance office already, and we have been uh, introducing some improvements, such as the encoding of the monitoring that they have or the counseling. We have already improved that part of the system so that they could sort of review the, the historical consultations that the student has gone through. Very nice. And uh, we will now, uh, any more questions? Last question? No more? So, okay, just a comment. Actually, we thank their college and the students who did the study. It really made our life easier at the guidance office because it's always a struggle. If a student transfers to another college, we have to dig up the records and hand them over to the next counselor who will be in charge of that student. But with this system that is already available, we can actually um, look into other students' uh, records. But of course, with the assurance to the university that it's only for guidance use. I and I think, Anna, in addition to that, um, the system itself is later on, if we try to improve it, would not just be limited to those aspects, but rather it could be applied not just for the college, but also for the elementary, high school, if we try to expand it later on. Yeah, I have something in mind also. Maybe we can sell it to other schools. <laughs> Yes, I think because a lot of school also is having the same problem. Actually, we have, been, we have benchmarked in other schools. They have their own systems. Like they click a, a student's name. All the psych test re results since first year are there. The grades are ready. So we are really behind. <laughs> the, the only, I think the only issue that we somehow uh, can't resolve is the... Uh, what's this? The psychological test itself, because we need to ask authors of the psychological test if they would allow to to be part of the what's this? The the system. So um, what's this? Um, that's one. And then somehow, uh, if if we try to integrate the other psychological test, then that would be very useful. What about the ed? Well, not besides the psychological test. You know, I'm impressed with their system that they encode data of students and it goes to the national office. Even uh, we went to a school out in San Enrique somewhere and they have this computer there. They, they are required to input data of their students. So somehow they're also keeping up with the systems that are needed so that they are able to keep records more efficiently. Okay, that's good. So let's now go to the recognition of active participation in R&D. Uh, we will be distributing certificates. May call on uh, Dr. Mary Opinatrante. <laughs> okay, so I'm assist. <laughs> So um, this is the Certificate of Recognition 
um, is presented to Dr. Evan Anthony B. Arias in grateful recognition for presenting this paper entitled Rural Urban Interactions and Interdependence Policy Implications for Enhancement of Linkages Between Iloilo City and the Province of Guimaras. During the 17th Research and Development Week and the 21st Faculty Research Symposium with the theme Resiliency and Sustainable Development held at the uh, Educational Media Center, Central Philippine University. Uh, given this ninth day of March 2020 at Central Philippine University, Iloilo City. Signed, Dr. Mary O. Penetrante and Dr. Irving Rio and Dr. Chidor C. Robles. Okay, so the same certificate is presented to Professor Rea Baluntong. Okay, and the next certificate is for uh, Professor Engineer Margie uh, Paranio. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and the next certificate for Dr. Raquel L. Polecchio. So to wrap up, uh, we have four uh, uh, very impactful researchers this afternoon. The first one is Rural Urban Interactions and Interdependence Policy Implications for Enhancement of Linkages between Iloilo City and the Province of Guimaras, objective of which is to uh, analyze the interdependence of rural Guimaras to urban Iloilo. And um, this will benefit management field, policy making, NGOs, funding. And um, the findings show that there's a need uh, to um, coordinate with each other, you know, Iloilo uh, City and uh, rural Guimaras, for a better um, uh, policy making and uh, funding and uh, management of the resources. Uh, the second study is efficiency, sustainable alternative technologies in education, student retention guidance and counseling decision support system using C4.5 algorithm and li linear regression, um, objective of which is to uh, s determine the effectiveness of the algorithm C4.5 to test um, the effect effectiveness as well as to test the family dynamics and the effects of this uh, uh, program to the student performance in the academy. Result of which shows excellent uh, evaluation of uh, program for in application to student performance. And we also have the efficiency, sustainable alternative technologies in engineering, computer assisted electrical load design and analysis system. And uh, it showed that uh, the system is an excellent way of predicting the kind of wirings and circuit breakers for electrical engineers. And uh, the last one is the efficiency, sustainable alternative technologies in health assessment of the EH Connect strategy as alternative health service points for the OH Adolescent Health and Development Program. And it shows, the result shows a uh, very good effectiveness of the program. And um, I think uh, this study um, is a study that would check the impactness of a certain uh, program already implemented. Uh, we had this uh, seminar workshop, I think, last year which was sponsored by government agency, World Bank, I think. And uh, I think this is one uh, very good, excellent uh, research. So that ends our this afternoon, sir. La, Mom, Dr. Mary Pinatani is to say something. For all the presenters, uh, we would like to thank, thank you for all the effort and uh, please uh, continue to be active uh, researchers 
because we really need faculty members who are active, actively uh, what's involved in research. It is unfortunate that we have very few audience, but you see if, uh, our faculty really appreciate uh, research and development, we would be able to uh, develop uh, impactful research. No? Uh, I believe that even if you are just listening there, no, uh, hearing all of these inputs may give you some idea of how to do research and maybe in the future you will have the uh, the time and the courage to do uh, research as well. So thank you for the presenters and thank you for the committee who organized this, especially si Ma'am uh, Mirna, parik-parik gid siya sa pagkaon. Tomorrow, <laughs> yes, also the secretariat, of course, ang taga URC, mga work students and practicum students. Thank you so much. Um, tomorrow, we will start at 8, 8.30, 8.30. I hope that you will come and encourage more faculty to attend because this is really... Uh, a very useful no, conference. Galing daw hindi pakid kita maka-appreciar sina. No? Please encourage more of your friends to come. Uh, tomorrow we will have uh, papers on food safety and security. This is one aspect that we feel we need today. Also, we will be having paper on institutional effectiveness like uh, identification of the weak points no, of uh, an, a higher learning institution in terms of its student services. We also have one for um, Christian stewardship. This is a, also an interesting study, right? And so, for the senior high school, junior high school, we also encourage you to come tomorrow to attend the presentation. Okay? So, let's give the presenters a big hand. Dapat hindi ma... Ano panawag? Hindi madudla. Dapat may encourage. So, at this point, I would like to request Dr. Pulecleo to lead us in a closing prayer. Thank you, everyone. Shall we stand? Let's look up to the Lord in prayer. We thank you so much, Lord, for this afternoon's activity and how we have exercised the knowledge that you have given each team, each group, and each individual that have presented their studies. We thank you, Lord, that you have enabled us to do all this so that we can share the findings and so that others can also be challenged to do their own studies, that we can be able to share them and make uh, uh, life better, that we can be able to help each other be resilient so that programs that are um, implemented are sustained. Lord, we pray that you will dismiss us now with your blessings. Once again, we give you the glory and thanksgiving for all the things that have been accomplished this afternoon. We do not get the credit, but because of you, we were able to do it, so we would like to thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.